Hi, my name's Abe, and I'm going to show you what linear approximation is all about. Okay, so you remember at the very start of calculus, right? You would have learned this, you would have seen this. You would have seen f dashed of x is roughly equal to f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? That's how you approximate a derivative, and this is good for h small. You want h to be small, right? Remember, the closer your gap is, the more accurate your estimation is. Well, linear approximation just uses exactly the same idea, except it rearranges the formulas. It just goes, let's make f of x plus h the subject. And so, if you were to rearrange this formula, you'll get f of x plus h is roughly equal to f of x plus h times f dashed of x. No magic so far, right? We're just rearranging stuff. But what is this saying? What is this new formula talking about? So it's saying this. If you want to find uh, some value of f, right? Let's say f of x plus h. So that's just some value. And you know, and you know that you have a nearby value. So f of x represents our nearby value value right so you know like for instance you want to find uh, you want to find say you know the function what does f of x squared equal when x is equal to 7 let's pretend that you don't know what 7 squared is and you say well I know 6 squared so for instance f of x or this nearby value can be f of 6 now h h here is simply how far away you are from your nearby value and f dashed of x is the derivative of your function at that point so so far if it's not making any sense let's draw a graph pictures clear things up very nicely so I'm going to show you this this is my graph it's going to look like this and I'm going to say that I would like to find say this is some complicated f of x I don't know how to really compute properly I want to find this I want to find the value at B so in other words I would like to find f of B I don't know what f of B is but what I do know is f of A so f of A is known. So we know f of a. We don't know f of b, however. We can estimate f of b. So you can estimate f of, f of b using a tangent at f of a. Essentially that's what you're doing. So you go in there, draw your tangent, like so, and you say, okay then, well according to my calculations, f of b is just going to be the equation of the tangent evaluated at b, right? So this here lines up, and so you come all the way across, and this value here, that's your... estimated f of b this value right there so do you see what we're doing it's pretty simple right we just we don't know f of b so we estimate f of b based on a tangent you draw at the point a now where h comes in h is the dif the distance between a and b and just like differentiation you'll see that the closer a and b are or the smaller h is the better your estimate would be, right? So for instance, if I were to draw, let's not pick A so far away, let's put A up here, then I would have this tangent, tangent would look like this, and suddenly my estimate, which would be here, would be very close. So you see, this is the same idea as differentiation. Very good, isn't it? Okay, so that's 
essentially explaining what it is, let's run through a quick example of how you might want to use this in an exam, because in real life this really does not happen. Another does a lot of things you learn in methods. But anyway, um, let's, let's say, let's do this. So my example, example is to use linear approximation to find the cube root of 26. Okay? So, how do we start? It's nice to determine the function that we're looking for, right? So, from, from our little question, we can see that, okay, most likely the function that they want to see is the cube root of something, right? Cube root x, or x to the power of a third. Now, the way I've drawn my example over there is that the, the example over here is actually sort of in the shape of x to the power of a third. So maybe we'll just use that graph. So the idea is that I want to find f of b. So this thing here, cube root of 26, is f of b, i.e. cube root of 26, or cube root of x, where x equals 26. Yeah? Okay. So that's what we want. So that's what you're looking for. Now you have, you what you're looking for a nearby value, right? Now, what's a value sort of close to 26 that you know the cube root of? So if you know your cubic numbers, cube of 1 is 1, cube of 2 is 8, cube of 3 is, oh look, 27. Very close, isn't it? So, the key here is that we know the cube root of 27 is equal to 3. Another way to express that, f of 27 equals 3, right? So suddenly things get a little bit clearer. We see that um, we see that f of x, f of x in this equation here, f of x is f of 23. So x is 20, uh, f of 27, sorry, not 23. And so, f of x is just 3. Now, f of x plus h. f of x plus h is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find this, right? And we want to find f of 26, don't we? We want to find f of 26. So, f of 26 is just going to be f of x plus h. So here, x plus h equals 26. We explained before that x equals 27, right? Because if you put 27 into the cube root, you're going to get 3, a number we know already. So we know that h here is minus 1. Yes, h is allowed to be a negative number. Okay, knowing that, what else do we need? Nothing, actually. You go ahead and you can find the derivative of x, of f, and then you just plug them all into the formula. Pretty simple. So, we see that f dashed of x is equal to, so f of x is x to the one, the power of a third. So you bring down the power, take one away from the power. Right? You should be pretty clear on how to do this. And in this, in this formula, you see that you need f of x, and you also need f dashed of x. So you need f dashed of 27. One third, 27 to the power of negative two thirds. Before you put that in your calculator, think of how you might want to do it manually. Well, I'm not holding a calculator here, so I'll just quickly do it manually. The way to do this is you can separate the powers. 27 to the power of a third to the power of negative half. You can do that, right? 
27 to the power of a third, like we've mentioned many times in this problem so far, is 3. So, 3 to the power of negative 2 is 1 on 9. So, f dash of 27 is 1 on 27. Okay, so now time to put things in. So, I'm going to just say, according to the formula, f of x plus h, 27 minus 1, right? Because we want 26. f of 27 minus 1 is, sorry, roughly equal to f of x. Now, we know that that means f of 27 plus h is minus 1 times f dashed of 27, right? So basically all I've done is I've subbed x equals 27, h equals minus 1 into that formula. Okay, f of 27 is 3 plus minus 1 times f dashed of 27, which is 1 on 27. So 3 minus 1 on 27 is 2 and 26 over 27 and f of 20 of 27 minus 1 is f of 26 which is the cube root of 26 here you go so according to our estimate the cube root of 26 is 2 and 26 27 now if you go ahead with a calculator and check it out what you're going to see is that our value is going to be very, very, very close. Very close. And this is not a bad estimate because h is small. And also because if you know your graph, the cube root at sort of this area, so x is 20 something, is quite flat. So the gradient, right, we found that the gradient is 1 on 27. Pretty flat. So it makes a good approximation. So there it is. Linear approximation. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. I'll see you next time.